Brooke is a brand designer, website wizard, full-time nomad, and the ultimate dog mom. Please help me welcome Brooke Carr to the Ag Chicks podcast. Hey y'all, this is Allie Spears, your host of the Ag Chicks podcast, where I cultivate connections with the women who are helping feed the world. Okay, cool. I don't think so. Uh, I'm going to hit record, and if you're good, oh, hang on, now I have a weird background noise. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? It's because I have that on. Uh, okay, can you hear me still? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, also, my Zoom updated, so that might be part of my problem. So if you're good, just kind of catching up here to start things off because it's yeah. been, well, okay. I guess it's been what, two, has it been two years this it's January? It's been a long time, dude. <laughs> time is going wild. so fast. So wild. So uh, what the heck have you been up to? Oh, um, so ooh, I've been moving around a lot. I don't have any permanent home right now, so Right now we're in Ohio visiting family. We're currently living in a horse barn in a barn apartment and trading rent for labor. So I feed horses in the morning to pay for rent, which is really nice in the slower season of, you know, everything. And Mm -hmm. I took a little break, got to spend a lot of time with my family. So that was really good. Um, We're here for a few months from like November to February. February we leave for Europe and we're gonna be in Sicily for a month and then Prague for a month. Yeah. And then we'll come uh, back to the States and uh we'll probably go back to Arizona like in May and be there for five, six months, hopefully. Yeah. Cool. I know I yeah. saw that you were booking all your stuff for your Europe trip and I'm so jealous. Yes, I I'm very to... excited to go back. I want to go to Italy so bad. Um, oh, yes. It's the best, dude. Because you were there this last, last year. year, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where did you go exactly? Last year I lived in Rome. I got an apartment for three months in Rome and I brought my dog and everything and we lived in literally in a very roman neighborhood so like kind of across the river like from the main touristy part of rome like in a typical neighborhood which was really cool um i lived with a couple girls from tunisia Mm. and they were muslim so they like cooked just food like that i've never even seen before and it was really fun to get to know them and um yeah connect with them it was fun okay cool so I I want to dive more into that here in just a minute but I feel like uh for the listeners to give them a little bit of a background knowledge on first of all probably how we met and then a little bit about yourself as well so uh Brick and I met actually at the Rule Rooted reunion it was right and so you were there and you were doing um just basically some package work right for for people who attended is that kind of how that yeah. whole stuff is that how that evolved there yeah I think like Natalie set up to where like certain people who signed up first or something like that for the union got a meeting with me to do some branding stuff so yeah that's right and then you were put in the same group with myself and my mom and I don't know we just like hit it off like immediately we which did I I have a hard time doing that, especially like with other women. And so it was really nice because I feel like we clicked immediately and we had a really fun time. (laughs) I loved you and your mom. You guys were my faves. I was like, these are my people. They're so fun. And then after that, we stayed in contact and Brooke actually did all of my logo design and everything for the rebrand of Ag Chicks. So she is fantastic if you need anything, which we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute too about kind of everything that she does and just the creative that she is but let's start kind of at the beginning if you don't mind in terms of where you're from and kind of your involvement of agriculture and the western lifestyle and all that sure so I grew up in Ohio and I ran barrel horses so that's kind of where I got into the ag world or how 
it started and then I went to school for equine science at the University of Kentucky for a year and then transferred back to Ohio State for three years and in that time I did like all the ag classes pre-vet all of that stuff but decided that I couldn't be a veterinarian because one they don't get paid enough and two they work too much (laughs) and um, also like there's a huge part of euthanasia in the work and I couldn't handle it like I just know that about myself so I took a different route decided I was going to go all in on horses I've always been a crazy horse girl it's just a thing and uh, I went to Kentucky to work for the race horse industry and breeding industry then got more into breeding industry ended up in Oklahoma South Dakota Texas Illinois kind of all over just working The horse industry, you get bounced around a lot um, in that industry, typically. Um, It was a great experience, but I also realized, like, it's very hard to get out of being a grunt in that industry. So I was working in South Dakota um, for a pretty big performance horse breeder. I think they have, like, the one or two top producing barrel stallion oh, wow. in America so they're pretty big um but I was like shoveling shit it was freezing can I say shit I'm sorry yeah go for um, it <laughs> it was freezing cold and I just was thinking like I want to stop like trading my time for money like I I'm not I was riding colts and I love training horses and doing all of that but majority of my job was just caretaking like I did breeding work and all that but a lot of it was stall cleaning and feeding and I was cleaning stalls every day in the freezing cold and wondering like what can I do to like make a difference what can I do to that I'm actually going to love and have more time freedom basically so I started googling basically and uh I landed on a course from these girls called Bucketless Bombshells, and they teach women in the early days. They taught women how to create online remote jobs so they can travel the world. Travel's always been a huge passion for me. I've always wanted to do it. Never really had a family member who wanted to do it, so they all thought I was crazy, so I had to find out my own way to do it. And uh, so I took those courses. I like put it on a credit card. I didn't have the money for it at the time. And I just started learning everything I could. I say I went to YouTube University. I just yeah. constantly taught myself everything. And six years later, I'm still doing basically what I started then. So. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that you had quite that much of an evolution through the whole process. Uh, yeah, and okay, so you were working for the um, performance breeding side of the horse industry, right? So in terms of that part of your story, I mean, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, super uh, misconception, I'd say probably, because I don't know very much about the horse industry, but I feel like from the outside, it looks very high end, I guess. I don't know the right way to describe it maybe, but, um, but I'm assuming like you just mentioned in terms of there's a, it takes a lot to get to the top. Right. And so if you are not kind of, and again, this is totally my assumption, this could be very much off base, but if you're not kind of born into it, maybe similar to some assumptions about like ranching it's hard to kind of get into it and get to a level of I don't know involvement I guess I don't really know what I'm trying to say there but yeah I mean you have to work so hard in that industry and it's not that I didn't want to work hard I just like you can only clean stalls so many times in your life when you want to like travel and you have other if you want to be in horses basically you have to be in horses You don't really get to have anything outside of it. Like the people that I know in the industry that are successful, 
they don't travel they don't they don't do anything else and that's right. kind of how how that industry works in my opinion um so I just knew that I needed something different obviously I still love horses I'm still in the horse industry I just kind of wished that I could ride my own horses and not be paid to take care of someone else's so yeah I think that's a big thing especially kind of with this whole entrepreneurial mindset of I think people in our generation not that obviously entrepreneurs exist in all generations but I feel like more so it's becoming a common thing kind of with people our age in terms of they start in maybe like corporate world or working for someone else and then they have that realization of like you said like trading your time for money and it's not fulfilling like they're they're wanting something else and so they kind of go down this path of entrepreneurship um, which you clearly have done and so along that route though too so you I want to get more into kind of the digital media side of what you do and kind of the creation there but you also do um, horse photography as well correct yeah Mm -hmm. that's honestly like kind of my passion project like I take photos of horses because I love them I combine it with my love of travel so I find people while I'm out on the road I take pictures of them with cool architecture and stuff like that so um horses horse photography is just like my way of being creative staying in the horse world without having to be the person cleaning the stalls yeah exactly and then also I think going back to your comments about traveling I think that's also built into this kind of mindset of not really wanting to work for somebody and and having that freedom and flexibility and time um which I commend you on that because you have done it in a way that you can literally go to Rome right and live there for three months and and work remotely and so I think that's such a cool thing to be able to do and have so many unique opportunities and experiences uh so young as well and kind of be able to do all of that and take your dog which that's so cool (laughs) yes He's my favorite sidekick. He's staying home this year with his grandma because we're not going very long and I'm already heartbroken. I'm just dying. What is the process? <laughs> What's the is that like a major process to get like him to Oh, be able it's to terrible. Go? It's terrible. Like um it was super expensive because sure. being a Nebraska ranch dog, he didn't have like the appropriate things that he needed um <laughs> when we first went to the vet. So we had all these things and then our export paper got denied and then we had to rush it because I was leaving in 10 days and you can't submit it until then and then when I got to Italy like their veterinary state vet is ran through the government because everything's ran through the government basically very bureaucratic vibes Mm -hmm. and um they didn't want to give me an appointment because I can't speak Italian Uh. so and I have to have like this certificato di espatrio like thing to get him out and I I was going to be kicked out of the country basically my visa was ending and it was terrible I ended up having my roommate's boyfriend who's multilingual like he speaks four languages get on the phone with these people and like beg them to give me an appointment because I was leaving and oh it was the worst experience oh my gosh okay and then Another question, nothing to do with what we've just been talking about, but how did you find people to live with in a foreign country? Is there like a website for that? Like, how do you do? Is it just like like Tinder for roommates? Yeah, everyone asks me this, but I use this website. I am a part of a lot of traveling communities, um, listen to a ton of podcasts. Basically, I'd heard about this on a podcast. It's called Housing Anywhere, and it's Mm -hmm. short term leases basically anywhere some of them are you rent the whole apartment other ones are you rent a room in an apartment so I rented one of the rooms and the girls rented the other one so that's how I ended up with Tunisian roommates in Rome Italy (laughs) who guesses (laughs) but it was very fun I've also used um, Airbnb to do month-long stays that's what we're doing this year It's more expensive, but everything's included, and we made sure to get our own place because my partner's coming with me this year, so I just didn't want to be, like, sharing when, you know, yeah, that'd be a lot. 
Yeah. So sure. we've used that. Um, we've also looked at Spot a Home. It's an app. Mm. Um, very cool short-term lease app. They are ver- they like go and verify their properties with photos and everything, which I think provides people with like a lot of peace of mind. Yeah. And I've also used trusted house sitters, which I basically babysat dogs in England and then stayed for free. Hmm. So that very was cool. a cool way to travel cheaply. Yeah. Very cool. Who knew? Who knew? See, the, Who knew? the, the, Who the knew? more you know, the more you know. <laughs> yeah and then like okay so you went had you ever been before to rome or italy no no Mm -mm. i've been to ireland and england spain but no italy so had you done like a bunch of research or did you just kind of go and just figure it out as you went um i like wrote down all the things that i wanted to like in a place to stay like I wanted a lot of history. I'm really into that kind of stuff. Um, I also wanted not too busy and I picked the wrong city because Rome is the most chaotic, like busiest city ever. But it was it was so great. It was like living in a museum. That's so cool. Oh, I'm so jealous. That's <laughs> definitely, definitely on my bucket list. Um... I actually got to take horse photos there. I like got hooked up with my roommate's friend who has a horse at a livery like stable in like Rome city which is crazy so you I like got on a public transit bus and rode out to this spot like wandered through this little park and boom humongous horse stable three arenas in the middle of Rome wow how isn't that just crazy cool it was so cool that's insane Okay, yeah. now I'm gonna have to go look to see. Did you have you posted those pictures? Because now I'm now I'm intrigued to see the. Oh yeah, um, it's like a pink barn with um tiled roof. Oh, how aesthetically uh, pleasing! Funny. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. have to go look. Um, also because you're a woman of many talents, you were writing a book the last time I talked to you. Is that still happening? Yes. Okay. I'm still writing a book (laughs) um it takes forever uh I took a huge break it's pivoted a little bit but it's still much a project of my heart I I very much want to finish and write a book I also think I'll eventually write a non-fiction memoir-y type book because recently those have become my favorite um genre to read so I think it would be a fun genre to write in as well and I feel like you'd have a lot of great stories to include in <laughs> Maybe. <that. laughs> uh, so again, pivoting a little bit. So let I want to talk about kind of your business and your uh, creative aspects that you kind of implement and do there. Um, and I guess through that have been kind of afforded you the be, to be able to live the way that you're currently living in terms of kind of being able to travel and do all those things. So how did the idea behind your business start would be my first question so it definitely was taking those courses I took two courses well after a bunch of google google (laughs) searching I took two courses one called tech skills and one called design skills they're very introductory programs in these things the tech skills taught things like um maybe a VA would do or an email marketing assistant or a marketer or something on the like not as create not that they're not creative but like you're not making things you're kind of doing more, more strategic of, like, processes and yeah. st- strategy and stuff like that so they taught that one and it just didn't resonate that well <laughs> like I took it and I was like Ugh, I kind of hate this hence why those parts of my business struggle anyway <laughs> <laughs> my other course that I, I took from I can the, relate <laughs> oh god it's difficult man I gotta hire out <laughs> delegate <Okay>. um <laughs> so the design course was basically a very basic intro into what branding is what you deliver to a client and how to work Adobe Illustrator because mm-hmm. that is what I design in um that's what most designers design in um, so I was learning that program and it is difficult, like wanted to cry when I looked at all those tools, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now it's like 
the back of my hand I could do it with my eyes closed so if you're struggling to get into that kind of program and it looks crazy it gets better I promise just keep at it um so those two courses taught me that also I started really getting involved in people in those similar businesses starting putting myself in contact with those people which made me realize like they're doing it so I can do it that is like my number one tip for people if you have something you want to do surround yourself with people who are doing that thing because there's nothing more like validating or um, encouraging than seeing someone else do it and realizing that you can also do it hearing their stories and stuff will literally blow your mind so just keep going and it'll go it'll all happen in time um yeah go ahead I was gonna say a lot of your clients uh are I'm assuming mostly kind of small businesses right and so I think being I don't know as you know right having a small business uh, there's a lot of just trial and error and so I think being a part of that whole process is comforting when you can find some people who kind of know what they're doing or you can figure it out together even if nobody knows what they're doing exactly um yeah so I work with mostly small women run businesses um I didn't mean for it to happen like that I do still work with some men but I think I just relate to women better obviously so and connect with them better um I also like working with like not necessarily fresh out of the gate businesses but businesses who uh, have been in a couple years they really want to grow that kind of thing so I love working with those people I used to do design for anyone who asked me I would do anything just to learn and get paid and do it and that was a really hard way to go like um just do it doing grunt work is hard in any industry so find out what you like to do and try to really focus on that I would say because yeah doing designing things that you hate is not fun either you know (laughs) it sounds like a challenging creative process if you're just like not in line with it right oh it's so hard it's so hard or when people used to when I started my business people would come to me and tell me what they wanted like down to the exact things they wanted in the design and I would do it because I was trying to build a business so you do it right but I now I only take clients who like appreciate my creative process and my skills and all of that thing so and I for the most part I get very good clients now I don't have that issue anymore (laughs) Well, I mean, I'm assuming that you've kind of, well, not assuming, I know, because it's why I used you. Uh, Your work kind of speaks for itself. And so people, you're sought after because people know what they're going to get and they like the product that you deliver. So um, yeah, you do a fantastic job. Thanks so much. (laughs) It's definitely a lot different now. It didn't used to be so good. You could see some of that old stuff, you would cry. (laughs) It's a process, right? It's all a process. Uh, Yeah. I always say allow yourself to suck because gonna suck at first yeah so then okay so you were doing stuff you weren't enjoying and then now obviously that's changed a little bit but how did you like how did you start you just started talking to people or like what was that evolution of like gaining clients to get to the point where you're at now to where you can kind of be picky yeah so I took I started doing 99 dollar brand kits for anyone anyone who would take it right by ranchers for ranchers together let's make ranching easier previously known as cattle back box strayhorn has rebranded to better match their ability to push the envelope in creating innovative animal management products to serve the ranching community strayhorn is rooted in tradition and ranching legacy but they believe in the opportunity of looking at things with a new perspective to drive the industry forward. Check out all of the things that Strayhorn has to offer you and your herd. I'd also post work that I've done and someone be like, can you make a t-shirt? I made t-shirts. I did anything anyone wanted me to do. Um, the first brand board I ever did was for my friend's hair blog or something. 
something. Who knows? <laughs> and it was like the brand board template that I got off the design course that I was in. I, but like, honestly, if I didn't take that course, I wouldn't have even known where to start with branding. It helped me so much. I have invested in so much education since then, but I truly think like that for taking a beginner course and not jumping in too heavily at first really helped. Like they, they dipped my toes in the water and I realized that like, that was very interesting to me. Colors, typography, photography, creative direction, all of that stuff mashed together interested me, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. have known that if I wouldn't have taken that course. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. I think education can be scary sometimes because it's a lot of an, or it's usually like a large investment, but even personally, I know that like <laughs> same YouTube university, right? Like in the beginning, I did a lot, just tried to make it as cheap as possible. Um, but really when I started to kind of take advantage of those investment type opportunities, that's when things kind of started to fall into place, I guess you could say. Uh, but also just, I think for me, the biggest part of the education piece has been finding other people who are also kind of in that stage of working on things, trying to grow and being able to connect with them. So um, yeah, it's kind of a evolving process, I guess, in this world of small business and entrepreneurship. <laughs> but it then, really is. Changes every day. Uh-huh. So then you've got you $99 brain packages, which is insane. Uh, and then what, so let's, next question would be, when did you kind of start to format the more, I guess, descriptive or all-inclusive or different packages that you kind of now offer? So I didn't want to be in logo design. Logo design only is like someone tells you what you want, they want, and you type it out and you know, you drop something for them and send them on their merry way. But like, if there's no strategy behind the design, I, I hated it. Like, I was like, this is stupid. That's not going to help them. I wanted to like really set businesses up to succeed with their new branding. So I want to hit like every touch point that they hit with their clients. I want to design something for every part of it. You can't just have one logo and expect that to cover all your bases. It's going to look like garbage. <laughs> right. And it doesn't communicate with your ideal audience like it should, especially for those clients that just tell me what they think should be in their logo. Like when everyone wanted watercolors and arrows, like, I, listen, you might like that, <laughs> but it's not speaking to your people. Okay. Right. So, um, <laughs> I really think that when I started, when I realized I didn't want to like hand off singular logo designs, and there are plenty of designers who do that still, like, and they, they make just logo design work. But for me, I felt unfulfilled and bored mm -hmm. of just cranking out logo designs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's, what's your favorite aspect out of everything that you do? What's your favorite? like thing to do oh I mean I love like the the research part of creating a brand I like digging into like vintage um like say ads right now I'm designing a outdoors like uh outfitter uh actually it's a hunting outfitter in Kansas and Texas so I've been going through like old Winchester ads and different gun bullet ads and stuff like that and just seeing their typography and their color usage and um that kind of stuff really some it's like combining history and art together and I think that is why I like it so much yeah that's super cool and I think going through like the research aspect obviously kind of shows you what works but then allows you to give your creative spin on it as well to make it different yeah. for your client yeah it's so fun um like I said I'm using that I found this like font that's similar to the Winchester font and I'm gonna manipulate it a little bit it's gonna be so cool so okay so going back to I guess your package stuff so what again because you do a lot 
what is like what are your packages made up of or what offers do you have if someone's listening and they're interested in working with you okay so I'm actually pivoting because it's January and everybody pivots <laughs> to January. Let's I've change our lives. <laughs> Woo. Just like that. Um, I've been charging uh, the same for probably two to three years. Like I haven't, uh, my costs and my, I've invested a ton in education and I've gotten a lot better at what I do. So I am increasing my pricing yes but I'm setting up some things like design intensives so Mm -hmm. those will be like if this is a all in the works right now so I'm thinking of doing a brand and web package Um, basically it's like a mini version of my brand design and a web package in two weeks so um, it's like I'm going to book those and only work on those projects. Like basically we work together for two weeks and I am yours for those two weeks um, to really dig into your brand, not be distracted by outside um, projects and stuff like that and have a quicker turnaround time because a lot of business owners do not want to wait four to six weeks for a project. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a one of the turnaround. offerings. I'm going to possibly um have a bigger branding package um outside of that more digging into like people who need collateral packaging um extra stuff like that basically it's just brand and web design I'm not doing any singular logo design I'm not I don't want to do um only web either like you Mm -hmm. almost have to have your brand refreshed before you go into web design unless it's approved because branding will make branding and photography will make or break a website. Um, it just does. Like if you don't have quality photos and quality branding, it's very difficult to put together a beautiful website in my opinion. So I'm going to really try to set people up for success in, in that way. So just branding and web. Branding and web. Well, hey, that's a huge piece of it all. (laughs) From a marketing standpoint, business, everything. Because like you said, right, that branding story is really sometimes people's first kind of interaction with an individual, their company, their business. Uh, But then it also kind of gives subtle clues of what you're going to be getting if you were to work or buy from that business. So I think people underestimate branding and uh, colors and typology and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I think it's definitely something that has a much larger impact than people understand. I just saw a story. Did you see the story about Stanley and them revamping their brand? Yes. Yes. How freaking crazy. Yeah. So they like basically sold to like old men for over a hundred years. Mm-hmm. And then they decided to revamp their product with new colors in a new, basically, shape um, yeah. and market it to a different audience and really speak to someone else. And it literally, they like 17 million or something crazy. <laughs> Have they brought, oh my God, there's her Stanley Cup, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, it's just... maybe, maybe Stanley will sponsor me. Yeah, sponsor us, Stanley. Right? But it's just crazy how their brand was so rooted in like this, like one audience, and then they pivoted a little bit to appeal to someone else, and boom, huge again. Yeah, well, I think I think that's such an important message and reminder for businesses. Obviously, when you're just starting out, it's hard to target everyone right like that's a huge huge piece of the entire pie but I think being open to you know the word of what was it 2020 pivoting and uh, being being flexible to kind of what may work better to grow or increase sales or communicate better whatever the heck your goal is uh, I think it's a great reminder because sometimes your plan is not the plan that's going to work 
that's like people share all of the time that quote about like the the worst words ever shared in the cattle industry or we've always done it this way Mm -hmm. and like like bulking it innovation is something that will halt you in your tracks every time like you need you got to embrace the change even if it's hard absolutely and especially like speaking about agriculture the generational shift that's occurring right now a lot of ranchers and farmers are old white men for lack of better description (laughs) and that that is not going to I mean that's not the consistency there cannot remain um so I think being open to the change of in different perspectives and ideas and innovation bringing women in more to that aspect of the industry I think is going to be like very very important moving forward uh because things are going to change the world is changing society is changing and so including all of those different thoughts and ideas is going to be very imperative to the success of our industry, which not to get like, you know, big and scary and cliche about things, but I think it's true. Yeah, it is true. I mean, I would, I get to work with so many really cool, innovative women in the ag industry. Like I worked with a Christmas tree farmer. They end up buying this Christmas tree farm um, from this man who's owned it for a very long time but they're pivoting it to more of like an experience kind of vibe. So like you cut Christmas trees and then events and they're just doing more than the one thing, you know what I mean? They're adding other revenue streams to their business. And I think that's so cool. People are so creative and innovative of how they're doing that. And it is so fun. That was going to be kind of my next question for you is because you have such an integral piece of individual like people's businesses and such a creative aspect that you have to kind of harness. What's your approach to kind of taking someone's brand or business and then translating that to a digital slash graphic kind of format to tell that story? Because that's not easy. Yeah. So I do like a really intense um, brand questionnaire where people have to like dig into their ideal client. They have to give me their brand messaging, their vision, their mission statement. Um, We're looking at everything. We also look at their competitors, not to copy them, but to see how I can make them stand out from all of those other businesses. So we go through that together and then I provide a creative direction. So I'll pull inspo images of art, of old photographs, of basically anything that like fits the vibe or the mood. And then um, I'll start breaking down colors and how like colors are emotive. So like red can be sexy or angry or bold um whereas like let's say like a soft blue color is going to be soft and ethereal and you want to speak to people through every part of the brand so we're doing messaging colors fonts um patterns package design um and all of those things come together. Like, think of your favorite brand. What's one of your favorite brands? Do you got one? Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I put you on I don't spot. know. That's so on the spot. I don't like, I don't know why, but Wrangler came to mind first. Just Wrangler? because I'm wearing Wrangler jeans right now. Okay. I I mean, they've kind of had a revolution in their brand. Totally. totally. Um, and you think about their packaging. Think about the things they send you when you get a product. What does their website look like? Their social media? Who are the people they work with as far as like influencers? What kind of photography do they share? All of that is in the brand design. Mm-hmm. Like um, I like to share like curated stock images for my clients, even though I didn't design them. It's like curating that vibe that we want to give off to our customers. So I like to do that as well. Um Yeah, so just I like to think about like any way you interact with your audience and putting a branding spin on every part of it. 
So. Is there somewhere that you get like your most inspiration from, or does it just kind of depend? Um, art, history, architecture, nature, um, kind of a combination of all those things. I love to write, so a lot of things will come out while I'm just journaling and stuff like that. Um, getting outside always helps boost my creativity. Yeah. Living in Rome, I'm sure that helped. <laughs> yeah, literally just walk <laughs> around the corner to some thousand-year-old building. You're like, oh, beautiful. So with the, all that being said, I know you mentioned some of your upcoming travel plans, but what I know, and you just shared some goals, which I know you were afterwards, you were like, oh, I don't, I can't believe I just shared that because sharing's hard. But what <laughs> are some like big business or personal goals that you kind of have uh, moving into this year? And I'm not saying that because, you know, new year, new goals, just kind of as an overall things that you're looking forward to. Yeah, I think as entrepreneurs, we have goals regardless of whether it's freaking January or not. Yeah. We are always out here innovating and hustling and trying to optimize our business while also having time freedom. It's all a thing. Yeah. So I really want to release my latest web template. So I design website templates for mostly the Western industry. Um I want to release that new one and maybe make some new ones. Um, that's been really fun. It's like a lower entry point of working with me, basically, because um, a lot of my offers are higher ticket. I mean, like I'm a medium on the medium pricing scale, but for a lot of new business owners, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm kind of giving people a different into working with me through my templates. So that's really fun. Um, I picked that niche because it's always been my world. So I like being there. Um, what else? I want to be featured on five podcasts. So we're checking one off today. One done four more. <laughs> look, look at you I, starting strong. Oh, starting strong. What day is it? January 9th. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So some things outside of I guess what else what else for business I have some really specific clients that I'd like to work with this year I really want to do some kind of equestrian business because that's where my heart has always been I also really want to brand an independent bookstore mm. because I'm obsessed with books and I think that would be so fun um I want to do what else I want to launch my new offer suite which is really gotta happen before the end of January so we'll see about that in non-business goals this one's harder for me because I feel like most of my life revolves around my business but for travel this year um, we're gonna be in Sicily and I get to go to Venice and I'm so excited because last year I was in Italy and I didn't see Venice and I feel like you just have to like yeah. it's so different than anywhere else so I get to see that that's gonna be really fun I want to get better at film photography mm. that's been really fun way to like disconnect from digital things um just taking photos and then you have to like you only have a limited amount of shots and then you have to quit for the day mm -hmm. so I feel like that's been a really fun hobby um yeah and I want to read like you know, a hundred plus books this year because how many books did you read last year? I didn't count. I didn't you keep didn't up count. my good reads, but it's a fair amount. I read a book a week is probably it's probably like average. That's Sometimes crazy. it's two if I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely I feel like that's something I would like to get back into as well. Cause I don't ever have time just to like read for fun. If I'm reading these days, it's research or some proposal or something. And it's that it's takes the fun out of it, you know? It's so much, so much. <laughs> Ugh. That's what we're going to Maui in a few weeks. And so I bought <laughs> a couple books that I'm like hoping to finish while we're in Maui. So we'll see how that goes. But oh, that'll be beautiful. Maybe, maybe I'll just sleep on the beach instead. We'll see. <laughs> That's fine with the book on your face. Yeah, perfect. It'll as my sun shield, uh, yes. because 
pasty is all I got to say. I am pasty <laughs> right now. <laughs> Winter. Right. Oh, man. Uh, what else? I feel like there were some other things I wanted to ask you. Um, your ideal client, is that, do you have an ideal client? Is there someone that you would like, yes, like who you would, it doesn't have to be like a person. Is there an industry that you prefer to work in or is it kind of just wherever the, wherever the alignment happens? I think I like to work with, I like to work with women entrepreneurs. Yes, mostly. Um, I like to work with rural women entrepreneurs and in the ag space. I also just like to work with creatives in general. So Mm -hmm. people who kind of can get inside my brain and understand what's going on. I love that. I love connecting with people like that who are also doing a lot of things, kind of multi-passionate people. They're my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. You want to do everything? Great. We're going to be best friends. Maybe that's why we hit it off so well. We just I think so. It's because we have clicked. weird hobbies. Right. Weird hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> and have you seen those things recently where it's like when someone asks you what you do for fun and you realize you don't do anything for fun? And I feel like that's me because I everything I do, I am doing it because I enjoy it, but I don't necessarily think of it as like a hobby. You know what I mean? Like I just think right. of it it's, as- It means too much for me to be a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Life, man. Crazy. I made paper the other day. Oh my God, I saw that and I was like, only Brooke. It was so fun. Uh, But I made it like, I'm going to do, when I go to Europe this year, I'm going to do a photo a day project and journal entry in there. And I am so excited about that project. I think that's going to be such a fun way to be like in the moment and then have all those memories as well. So how many, so you're going to make pages before you go then or paper before you no, go? No. So like I'm, I have the notebook all done. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to get like a little mini printer for my phone and then cool. just print a photo a day and put it in there and then write a journal right. entry for it every day. How cool. What a fun way to kind of keep track of things. When I went, uh, we were only gone for like 14 days, but we went to, it was like my, right before my senior year of high school. We went to Fiji, New Zealand, Hawaii, and Australia. And our like trip sponsor was like, I really encourage you all to to take a journal and like write in a journal. And we did, like my group of friends did. And that's some of my like favorite things to look back on is my trip journal. Cause I don't remember every detail, but I wrote some random stuff in there. Oh, I know. It's hilarious seeing what you've wrote what you wrote in the past. My friend uh who went with me got married this last year. And so like at her bachelorette party, I was like, take a picture of your favorite page from your journal and we're going to read it to each other at your bachelorette party and we did and it was hilarious that Um, is hilarious but it's such a good way like tangible way to like hold memories in your hands it's cool right because pictures obviously capture what you're seeing but I think journaling captures what you're feeling like the feeling yeah yeah 100 percent for sure All right, Brooke. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. This is long overdue. If anyone is listening and they are interested in possibly working with you or connecting with you, what is the best way for them to do so? They can fill out the contact form on my website. It's brooktaylorcreativeco.com. I'm currently booking for 2024 and I would love to meet some of you guys. Awesome. Well, I'm so jealous. Can't wait to see all your pictures from your upcoming travels and check out your new uh, offerings for your business and keep it up, girl. You're just, you're just killing it. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Ag Chicks. Don't forget to follow along on social media at Ag Chicks for more agricultural related content. And also be sure to check out your favorite podcast gear from www.agchicks.net. We'll see you next time.